Lights podcast. Jeez, yes. Man Lights podcast. Man podcast. Was that too loud? It was a topics, little loud. All the topics today. All of them. Yeah, we've got a lot to discuss. How's everyone feel about some news? Well, news is usually bad, so let's see. May I elect that we have a certain kind of like ticker or like extra because you're so good breaking. at uh, intro music, like breaking news. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, you want to add more work to what I already do? <laughs> yeah, but you got it. Great. Okay. News. The Echo Disney Plus TV show is dropping all of its episodes in Netflix fashion. Ooh. So one big chunk. What does it mean? That it sucks. I hope it doesn't suck. I hope it's really good. How many episodes? Is it nine? I don't honestly care. <laughs> the idea of them dropping it all at once doesn't give me all the confidence in the world. But maybe they realize that starting a series in the middle of the month, so someone would have to pay for two months worth of a subscription in order to finish the series, didn't really retain many people. Yeah, I think it means that it's bad. Not that Disney's trying to be like, hey, we understand that we screwed you financially a few times, once or twice, maybe 10 times. I just think that with like Loki, it was the excitement every week of like, what's going to happen? And this show probably doesn't have that. And they were like, yeah, let's not have them talk crap about us every week. Let's just give it to him at once and hopefully get a week of good content. I hope we get an entire episode with no audio. I'm cool with that. I think that would be a really cool take on how they could do the character well. I like that. Not all that confident now because they're dropping it all at once. Yeah. And I just hope we get a deaf episode. Next bit of news. Comic book related. They're killing Kamala Khan. And listen, I don't want to harp on this because... Everyone on TikTok is, I'm not even going to say the writer's name because I think he's cool, but they're going after the writer. They're going after the Spider-Man run as a whole. They're now going after the fact that Kamala Khan dies in Spider-Man surrounded by a bunch of people she's not actually close with. So yeah, is there a bunch of red flags? Can I understand all the points everyone's making? Yes, I just am not going to beat this dead horse any further, but they are killing Miss Marvel, which is an odd choice. But there is some kind of fallen friend, number one, where Miss Marvel's creator, G. Willow Wilson, will be returning to write the character for the first time in a little bit. So let's weigh out all of the negativity with that, at least, because we know she's going to come back to life in time for the Marvels, right? Yeah, my biggest issue with it is not the fact that she's dying. I mean, comic characters die all the time. My biggest issue with it is Marvel leaked this information. Not any other publication leaked this information. Well, the death of Captain America was leaked by USA Today, but Marvel themselves said, here's a leak. Like, here's a spoiler for what's coming in Spider-Man. I think that was just a douche move, hardcore douche move. There was no reason for them to do that. But I don't think it was on purpose. I think it happened and they just tried to get in front of him and been like, well, if you're going to leak it, we're going to leak it ourselves. Because if you look at the screenshots that were leaked of her dying, Mm -hmm. it's not clear. Like, they're blurry. Everything that I read, that Marvel just dropped it for no reason. I could be wrong. Again, I'm also not sure. I'm going off people's TikToks, but I think that it got leaked and then they were like, we're going to leak it ourselves. That's how I took it. They Katy Perry, their own nudes. Um, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So her dying in Amazing Spider-Man, weird choice, Mm -hmm. but it's their biggest selling title right now. It's going to see the most eyes. Makes sense. Having G. Willow Wilson come back, fantastic writer. I'm excited to see what that issue is all about, Fallen Mm -hmm. Friend. If they do it well, we're going to be talking about how well they did it. And if they do it poorly, everyone will forget about it in a few years. We all know she's coming back before the Marvels, so she's not going to be gone long. I guess my counter to all of it is if you don't like the Amazing Spider-Man run, then don't read it because yeah. there's several other Spider-Man books yeah. you could read. <laughs> so just don't read that one. I think it's a good idea like for character depth because I think she can use it. But I really hope Jeremiah is wrong that she'll be back before the movie. I hope it goes longer. Like, why not go longer? It's nothing against Ms. Marvel. It's nothing against Kamala Khan. But no, no. Death in comics don't last long enough. With the exception of very few. Superior, Peter Parker, technically was dead for like a year. Yeah, but he was still talking to Otto. Like he was still there in a presence. The only death really that I can think of that lasted a very, very long time, Barry Allen in Crisis on Infinite Earths was like 30 years. Or, I mean, the 10 years that comics were without the Joker. What I refer to as the good times. Yeah, deaths in comics don't last long enough. And especially with the movies now, they definitely don't last long enough to make it mean something. I did see one thing where it was like, watch her be resurrected with powers that mimic the TV show. I mean, Star-Lord rarely uses his actual helmet in the comics in the last few years. This new run, Al Ewing Guardians, I think he's back to being actual Star-Lord with his helmet. But since the first Guardians movie, the top of Star-Lord's helmet has disappeared. So 
that's just the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Jeremiah, now we were talking about Star Wars. Would you like to comment on the idea that he's going to be recast? Since, you know, he's said so much about not coming back as Star Lord. I don't think Star Lord will be recast. I think we're going ahead with this new team of Guardians. And I think by the time Star Lord is important to come back around, Chris Pratt will look at the money and just say, yeah, I'll do one more and not worry about it. I mean, Marvel's smart to do the Guardians the way that they're doing them right now with about half the team being CGI. That works out really, really well for them, at least. And I think, no, this is me tooting my own horn. I think the next time we see Guardians is an animated show oh. that is a part of the MCU. That way they don't need to get Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel involved. They can reuse Vin Diesel's voice because I am Groot is all he's really saying. They can get someone who sounds like Bradley Cooper and then they don't have to worry about Sean Gunn. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Although I like what you're saying. You are now on my list. And Dimitri got we'll a lot just, of hateful uh, comments we'll on by TikTok. That. <laughs> They're all wrong. It's okay. Steven underscore Y07 from TikTok made a good comment comment regarding your theory, Dimitri. He said that his theory is that star has a sister somewhere and that she has the God gene, another sister from Ego outside of Mantis, and that sister eventually take the name Star-Lord. That's a terrible idea. A there terrible are idea. so many siblings is, that they have. Because, follower. Uh, I appreciate them. It's a terrible idea. What was the name? Steven underscore something? Fuck you. How about that? <laughs> We don't need you, you took the don't words right out of my mouth. My <laughs> two cents with that is there's so many siblings. Like if you watch Guardians 2, Ego repopulated with so many people. Having one That's person cool one. be like, you know, I like the humanoid. I'm gonna go find him and take up the mantle. I don't like that idea. Will someone else take up the mantle Star-Lord? Maybe? The original Quasar. I want to say his name is Quentin. Hold up, hold up. Weldon Vaughn. All right. Weldon not even Vaughn. close. Nope, I was not close. Wow. So Weldon Vaughn coming back, becoming Quasar or taking up the mantle Star-Lord. Would I be fine with him becoming a new Star-Lord? I'd like to see him as Quasar first since we got Phyla. She can eventually become Quasar as well. The idea of him returning with the white screen and all that. When you guys dove into that a lot with the last episode. You're welcome. I see it being in the distant future. No time anytime soon. We won't see him for five to ten years, if we do at all. So like when he's old and in the wasteland. Oh, that was a really dumb fan theory. I liked it. (laughs) I'll give you bonus points for connecting the dots there. That was brilliant. I wouldn't even say it was a theory. That was more of just like a, wouldn't it be cool if this makes sense because of this? I don't believe at all it's ever going to happen. But if you called that, Marvel, hit us up. (laughs) Before you continue, there was an interview where Sean, no, sorry, James Gunn. too, says, yeah. you make a great Batman. No, fuck off. Fuck you, James Gunn. Chris Pratt? He said it. No, we're moving on. Oh. The hell out of here. Let's take one step back. <laughs> Not Batman. Who would you cast Pratt as in the Batman universe? Prison guard number three. <laughs> so I like someone in the Justice League Dark group. Phantom Stranger? That. Man Bat. Man Bat would be cool. Man Bat would be cool. Him as Man Bat would pace. be cool. But also... If you wanted to put him in Batman, that might. he could be almost any villain as far as like Professor Pig. He could be Hush. Hear me out. I like the Hush idea a little bit. Right. I'm trying to think oh. who else. <laughs> it's like way too much money. It's really not. And For like, his face is covered. <laughs> he's going to use all of these actors again. Like you're going to see Dave Bautista in some form again in the DCEU. Bane, Bane. More news. Captain America New World Order is changing its name. We don't know to what, but I'm assuming. You can agree or disagree. They're just going to call it Serpent Society because no one's going to know who Serpent Society is. They're going to put in the title. So, you know, going into it, that's a villain. I don't think it's going to be that. It's going to be something along the terms with fly in it. Flies again or not like a comic run. No. No. And Seth Rollins seems to be the main villain. Don't do that. Don't act like you're a fan. I think Seth Rollins is a red herring. Here's my fan theory. Here we go. You ready for this shit? Give Seth Rollins me. is going to be in 15 minutes of the movie. I think he's going to be a crossbones in Civil War scenario. Mm-hmm. And the big bad is going to be Hummet, Zemo. I like it. Much like George St. Pierre in Captain America 2. It's going to be something yeah, like that. Yeah, Batrock. Yeah, similar situation. I, like I think the Serpent Society is going to be the first thing that Sam has to kind of deal with as Captain America. And he's going to put him away super easy like oh that wasn't hard maybe i am cut out for this shit and bucky's gonna be like yeah that was great and then hummus zemo's just gonna fuck everything up for them burn it down kyle doesn't understand 
I know. So yeah, I don't understand. I had to Google this Rollins fellow, <laughs> and he is a wrestler of sorts. Mm-hmm. And I immediately stopped caring <laughs> at the moment. So so let's back up there. Becky Lynch, his wife, the man, was in two scenes that got deleted. She was in an internals end credit scene that got deleted. We got to think who Seth's going to be in the service society. He's most likely going to be Cobra. Yeah, I knew that. So who would Becky be? Cobra's wife? Viper? I don't, I don't think Cobra had a wife. Always got to be a love interest, you know? Yeah, true. You got to sell those last three seats for the love story. That is funny because they are married in real yeah, life. Yeah, and they have a kid. I was telling Kyle because he didn't know. He just guessed that on his own. He just guessed it. You're not a fan. No. Just stop it. Just knock it off. I'd rather move okay. on. As far as like in-ring performers, he's like one of the greatest. So you just don't get it. So it's okay. In- it's not okay, but like, it's okay. Seth Rollins would be Sidewinder and she'd be Anaconda. I like it. Book it. I dislike it. Hopefully. But I assume like they're going to have to do stuff like this. Like a lot of fanfare and a lot of shit that you didn't see coming for this movie. What do you guys think about the new suit, the leaks? Kyle, in our notes, you put a very good point. They're changing up the suits for toys. That's smart. Merchandising makes up the majority of the money. I hope we get that white suit again. That perfect suit from the show. Like he puts it down and then he comes back to it towards the end. Similar to the first Captain America movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that. I think they just made a blue suit so he's more familiar and is more so called Captain America instead of Captain Falcon, which people are doing. It's really annoying. But yeah, no. TikTok is like, I don't know why they keep doing this. And I've just been slowly commenting on everything and just like toys. It's for sales. There's nothing else. Someone said he looks like A-Train now. And I was like, ah, damn, I don't like that. You cannot see it. The goggles slash glasses are a little on the nose, literally. Personally, I don't love any Captain America outfits ever outside of the one used in Secret Avengers and Remender's run, which is very similar to. Oh, I hardly remember. I hardly remember. <laughs> That's my favorite Dimitri about. joke. What are you talking about, guys? <laughs> Which I guess that costume yeah. <laughs> the Civil War costume, right? It's just yeah. blue with silver. So, I mean, that's the only one that I think is cool. I hate every other Captain America. What about costume. the original Nomad costume? Absolutely not. <laughs> I think Bucky is going to be in a Nomad costume for this movie. Hmm. That's my guess is he's going to take up the mantle of being Nomad. That'd be all right. Instead of Winter Soldier. He doesn't want to be called Winter Soldier anymore because of the negative connotation that name is going to come across. The murder. Yeah. So I think he's going to go by the name Nomad. Do you think he'll be in it? Oh, yeah. I think he'll be a big part in the movie because it hasn't Mm -hmm. been talked about. But Sebastian Stan signed a six movie deal after Winter Soldier. I didn't know that. That's Civil War, Avengers, Avengers... He's got three more movies. And he got the show. Maybe that counted as one of them. But even then, that's two more movies. Probably took the same amount of filming, if I had to guess. Moving on. News. No, that was all the news, actually. Oh, okay. So I got a message on Facebook, which I never, ever do. But I guess because I've been posting reels, Facebook is like tripled in followers. Like went from like double digits to triple digits. Thank you. So my new friend Joseph wrote me this long message, which I think I'm going to read in its entirety because it actually makes a lot of sense. But you got to like think about it. So he said, love the video, guys. Funny stuff for sure. Here's a little topic you might want to talk about. So I'm going to read it word for word. I grew up with Star Wars Episode One. I was 10 at the time of its release. And I didn't hate it. Thought it was fine. It's a good movie. Whatever. But as I grew up, I kind of realized why people don't like it. And I put to perspective. Imagine in 15 years, they come out with a Thanos prequel movie. And it's him as a child. And he's racing in space NASCAR for some reason. And he's really annoying. And then his girlfriend dies of a broken heart or something. Shrug emoji. I don't know. And that's why he turned evil and tried to wipe out half of everything. That's pretty much what they did to whom people thought was the most powerful man in the galaxy. That's an interesting take. Right? We're all of the same age because Phantom Menace came out in 99. So like when I saw it, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I liked Jar Jar Binks. Obviously, growing up, seeing it in obviously a different perspective. They can't do that, though. Because there's too much source material for comics, whereas George didn't have that source material. He started on episode four because he wrote episode four. He didn't write episode one, two, and three, and then like, "Ah, I think four is going to make the better movie. He had to wretchedly actively go back and retcon it all. I think he went back too far, and they definitely made a movie that was easy to merchandise. Lots of toys, lots of t-shirts. So many. But yeah, so... I think it's a really interesting thought process, though. I understand that, yeah, there's source material that wouldn't quite work for Thanos, but it is something to think about that this franchise that is Marvel, not that it's going to necessarily run out of source material, they might just start to do things more for money. 
I think that episode one was written and directed with the idea of getting new fans on board. And it wasn't to cater to the older fans who saw the original trilogy. Right. Because then our generation got our trilogy with episodes one, two, and three. And now the Skywalker saga is over now. Mm-hmm. And we're getting a whole new thing. So I think they're going to be building more on the mythos. But the idea of going back to episode one and kind of looking at it in a modern perspective is difficult in the same lens as the MCU. It's valid to do it. I just think it's a difficult thing to argue. But I do think that in our lifetime, we're going to see some weird ass shit where it's like, are we really getting Tony Stark as a teenager in an animated TV show that's connected to, you know? Yeah, true. Not to call MCU stands stands, but they'll eat that shit up. I want Starkiller. What is Starkiller? I don't know what Starkiller is. Darth Vader's apprentice. Ooh. Who I believe has like two sabers and does stuff with them. I'm not a big Star Wars person. I just know of Starkiller. But they should do that whole story run. I mean, that might be where the movies are headed. There's no reason that that can't also be incorporated eventually. I know all of those things that you were talking about. In other news, I actually got another comment from TikTok, which I thought was worth mentioning. Comic talk at talk.comic on TikTok. We actually communicate quite a bit. I say we're mutuals, one would say. A little bit of mutual action. They commented and said, I think Idris Elba could play an older Static Shock and that they could do it, that he was in a Batman Beyond movie. He would be like, a, you know, a cameo or something more. Before I give my two cents, do either of you want to hit this first? I want to say one thing, and I've been yelled at a few times for saying Static Shock and not just calling him Static. Because that's what he was in the comics was Static, and then he became Static Shock because of the TV show. Excuse me, I apologize. <laughs> Jeremiah, go ahead. <laughs> I think that's a dumb idea. The only reason why I think it's a dumb idea is because Static, I feel, falls under the umbrella of Spider-Man in the sense of his age, the time period in which that he became popular, the people who could immediately relate to him. There is zero aspect of, I think, any normal person that can relate to how gorgeous how strong, how powerful Idris Alba is. And Static wasn't any of those at the start. He was a clumsy kid who messed up and who was still trying to like figure right, out this, what the hell is going on. This is when he's I, old. Yeah, but I don't like an old version of Static. Give me a young one first. Well, yeah, like, first, but Idris, like... Eventually, maybe. If they did Batman Beyond within a few years of releasing a Static Shock movie, they're not going to yeah. take and age up that actor. They can just have him be the older one because he fits the older one. Now, yes, am I going off of two 15-minute riddled with commercial episodes referring to <laughs> him fitting this character correctly? Yes, but... He does fit the older static. Okay. Aren't they currently writing that right now? Because we were at New York Comic Con. We were in the panels. You were supposed to get all the variants, which you're going to now pay a triple for. I'm trying to take it easy, all right? So remind me. Are you complete with your Beyond? I think there's three variants. I'm not sure if I bought. Okay, so here's the problem. Okay, when I see something I don't have, I try and keep up. I'll try and check every so often. I have different ways of checking. None of them are sound. I have no list, no real tracking. I got to send I, you the Excel spreadsheet I made for the Rivera collection. <laughs> I need to build that the same for this. But what happens is I buy duplicates. So I have a $150 variant set that I'm watching right now on eBay that I'm 90% sure I bought but can't find. Oh, Now, I don't Do believe it's going to go up in price. So it's like, all right, I'll just wait. But... Yeah. Do you know how I have my spreadsheet set up? I've seen it once, but I don't recall. So it's the title of the book, the issue number, the date of publication, the company that put it out, any keynotes, or if it's a newsstand, the writer and the artist for every issue. That is a Rivera book. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So as of right now, it sits at 401 issues. All you're missing is the little number above the barcode. And the creator social security numbers. That's all you're missing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, so for the Batman Beyond, that should be easier to do because there is concrete. You can just look at Batman Beyond and you have that. Because you're not trying to collect every appearance he has, just every one of his own title, right? Every appearance. Every appearance of him? Which I used to be so on top of. Yeah, you did. And I, mean, I just am too busy to be that crazy right now. So I'm having trouble just getting the variants at this point. And eBay has like a really bad thing of like showing past orders. Like they cut you off after like not even a year. Yeah, they do. So I have variants that are versions. I don't even know what the book is. So like I need to, like to open, open it, it up and yeah. investigate and figure it out and then be like, OK, let's now remember what this is and put it into some kind of Excel sheet. And I'm just a little nervous that it's going to get harder because, you know, if a movie does come out, we're going to get a ton 
on about and be on stuff. Oh, yeah, on yeah. Like just you might as well slot. give up at that point. Right. Like I gotta in, get ahead unless of it. you're caught up. Yeah. Right. For the longest time I had every appearance of the purple man in mm. comics. Not that it was difficult, and that fell off right after Charles Sewell put him in a book. So if he's been in a book since the Charles Sewell Daredevil run, I don't have it or I don't know about it. I tried to do it with Miles, and what happened was I just stopped because there's a variant that like no one can get. It's a black and white to the one in 15, number one. I think they gave it out at like a breakfast and there was only one on eBay. And at the time I was looking at it, it was like 5,000 and then it just kept going up and then it got to 58,000 before any other variants jumped. I mean, we don't was, have any confirmed high. sales on it, but we should look that up and talk about that for real though, because that is the one book that eludes the current first appearance variant. Yeah. That is the one thing that is somehow worth more that nobody is talking about. And no one will ever get it. Whoever has it is never going to give it up. So this is from the first run. Mm -hmm. It is the number one. Number one. And it is a 1 in 1 in 15 15 black and white version. Yeah. So really, it's not a 1 in 15. There's a 15 in the world, pretty much. Spider-Man, number one. Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, number one. Ultimate Comics Spider-Man. How many copies do you think exist? I would assume like 10. I mean, if it was a breakfast, I would guess like 50. That's definitely something that I want to find and talk about. It's really cool. And it's same cover, same everything. It's just black and white. And I saw it once. I don't think I've seen it in like five-ish years, eBay or anywhere else. I haven't thought about it since you it's, last told me it's five or six always, years ago. It's always on my mind because like had I got that book, Always on I would have I would have had to get everything. And much like you guys are talking about, once the movie came out for the first Spider-Verse, his variants went crazy. So like that also made me stop. Not a Miles guy like you guys are, but that Fiona Staples cover. Oh my I had heart. one. I know you had one. It makes one. me sad. And I, and I, you know I don't know what I was did. thinking. But it was just, it was whenever just I see that at a con, I'm just like, if I like the character to the level that you guys do, I wouldn't hesitate on it. But I like Miles. Don't get me wrong. He's just not my dude. It no, no, I get much it. Your guys' dude. All right. So one last rumor and we'll wrap this up. The most relevant rumor, because the other ones are old, actually old news. The Superman legacy top choice casting has been spilling out. And James Gunn's been trying to clean up the mess, but some of it seems too possible and too real. So, Jeremiah, since you're so good with names, if you will read the last rumor. David Cornisuit, Nicholas Holt, and Emma Mackey are top contenders for roles of Superman, Lex Luthor, and Lois Lane in Superman Legacy. Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, I Um, think that would be wonderful. I dislike it immensely, mainly because he's Caucasian, and he is from About a Boy, and I can never unsee him from that movie. But yes, he... Lex Luthor is also Caucasian. Not in the Justice League animated TV show, which is what James Gunn is saying is his inspiration for a lot of this. So I would like to see a Lex Luthor like that. Like that. That's (laughs) color. Not a white boy with a little bit of a British accent. I don't know any of these actors by name. I would have to see their faces. Uh, Beast from... That's what I was assuming. Yeah. I don't know if I like it. Not for that. I I think he can um... play dark and serious easy. And that's what I want my Lex Luthor to be. Especially since the Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor was a disappointment. I think we'll get like a slightly better version of that with this guy. Have any of you seen The Great on Hulu? He's not a villain, but he's like a king in a sense, but he's like kind of a terrible person. I think that's why they're doing it almost. They're doing it because he was Beast. And they're not and doing they it because he was Beast. Double down. It's like the most popular they're, thing in their movies. It's to take not one it. from one universe and bring him over here. And that's where we're going to have a Sue Storm that used to be Harley Quinn. I, I don't really think like. Margot Robbie is going to be Sue Storm. I'm cool with it, actually. The the only the only thing that I absolutely love of taking old actors and putting in new universes, the thing that like warms my heart, and this is just me, is Valiant did a short little series called Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe, which was a fantastic series. You can find it on YouTube. The actor they got to play, Shadow Man, Damien Porter, I believe is his name, was the original Thanos from Avengers 1. I love that little mm. side note. Oh, so yeah, very random. He and said uh, it was the greatest moment of his life. All he had to do was to stand up, turn around and smile. And that was in a Thanos. And then he got to play Shadow Man in that web series. So. Which hot take. I liked the way Thanos looked in Avengers 1. He more. looked way better than he did with Josh Brolin's dumbass face. He was more 
purple. He looked like a mad titan. He didn't look like Josh Brolin's ball sack. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, to go back to the Superman legacy casting rumors, you said that you wouldn't really know. Is it David Corin Sweat? Just imagine Henry Cavill Young. He looks very similar with the chiseled face and all of that. So I'm okay with it, too, because I don't know if it was real by any stance. I don't believe it is. But there was a poster that was been going around where it's Cavill suit and it's kind of being like pulled away. And underneath it is more of like a classic Christopher Reeve suit with the undies. Right. So it's kind of like pulling that away. So part of me was like. It's kind of saying that that is Henry Cavill in a way. It's recasting him, but it's kind of making him look similar enough that it's kind of still somewhat not a complete, you know, because they're still holding on to that old universe as much as they're trying not to. They're still holding on to bits of it. And we'll see, you know, after the Flash, really how much they're holding on to. But the fact that Aquaman's releasing after this, even though it's supposed to be the relaunch. Anyway, it's completely sidetracked. The nice lady actress for Lois Lane. I have no idea who she is, but sure. Just give me a Superman (laughs) with a strong chin. That's all I ask. Yeah. Don't let this Superman legacy movie cancel the Michael B. Jordan project. I don't think it will. Because Earth 2, New 52 is severely underrated. Yes, it is amazing. Didn't have the strongest start, but like, what was it? Issue 6? fantastic we just took a whole twist turn new character slate and it just really so much potential there anyway family's podcast family's podcast not to say like oh okay like he does all the editing and stuff but if we took a phone call in the middle of an episode, <laughs> crazy he would be like a maniac. He's the boss. I mean, cut your balls off and mail them to me. I want true. That. That's what yeah. he would do. Uh-huh.